guys, welcome back to Leadership Series. This is Lesson 1.4 in the Leadership Foundations section, and it is Christ Likeness. And this is a much longer lesson, so we're going to get started, and we're going to start, like usual, with the verses. Okay. Ephesians 4.1 Walk worthy of the calling. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. So the Greek of walk worthy of the calling, walking is to properly walk in a complete circuit, to comprehensively walk around the walk in an ethical sense of how one conducts their life. To walk worthy, worthy is suitable and fitting, recognized as matching the actual value of a thing. And the calling, what is the calling? Calling is the calling from God to all people to receive his gift of salvation, including all of its benefits. The first John 2, 6, walk as he walked. He who says he abides in him ought to himself also to walk just as he walked. That's our call. So to abide, that is fellowship properly what it shares in partnership as the basis of fellowship a spiritual fellowship romans 8 4 walk in the spirit not the flesh that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit so we're talking about the in the greek the righteous requirements the righteousness is an, an act god approves focusing on the result justification and righteousness the restoration of a criminal with a legal fresh chance given also it applies to righteous deeds so these are righteous so what are the requirements of righteousness i fulfill i complete to fill individual capacity to the extent that it is fulfilled so everyone has a an individual capacity for righteousness and that should be filled to the maximum that is the righteous requirement of the law. First John 3, 2 to 3, putting yourself, aiming at Christ likeness. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Okay, so what is the hope? In the Greek, it says an expectation of what is sure. Hope. For the Christian, it is the hope of eternal salvation. And then to purify himself just as he is pure, that word is used, the same word twice. That is to be free from ceremonial defilement, to be holy, to be sacred, to be chaste, to be pure, inside and out, to be uncontaminated from sin. Then we move to Romans 8, 29, to be conformed to the image of Christ. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. To be conformed, conformed in the Greek is similar to or conformed to. It means sharing the same inner essence or identity or form, showing similar behavior and sharing the same essential nature. To be conformed to his image. So image is very close likeness, a bust that is carved, a mirror-like representation exactly reflecting its source. The word is dependent on an existing prototype, so in our case that's Christ, and it does not only resemble, but it is a replication of. We are supposed to be so Christ-like people only see Christ. John 10, 27 and 28. Follow me, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. The Greek for hear my voice is a little interesting. It is not just to hear like, oh yeah, I heard someone's voice. It is to hear and listen and understand and to comprehend by hearing. 
to use hearing to consider what has been said and to acquire information or learn from it, to be attentive to teaching. My sheep hear my voice and follow me. Follow is I accompany and follow along a road to follow one who precedes and joins him along as his attendant servant to accompany him, to be a disciple and to cleave steadfastly to one and conform wholly to his example in living and dying if need be. So to for the sheep to hear and to follow, that's, that's very serious. We are like supposed to be 100% dialed in, learning and applying. This is not just like a, yeah, yeah, I heard that. That's really neat. John 3, 30. He must increase, I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Increase is to make grow, to become greater in size, maturity, etc. With non-stop progress, that produces the development in the life of faith. And to decrease is to make inferior in rank or influence, to decrease in authority and popularity. John 14, 12, believe in me and do the works I do. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Romans 6, 12 through 13, be an instrument of righteousness to God. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey in its lusts and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. In the Greek, instruments is implements normally used for warfare, weapons to wage warfare, instruments to make war. So we are to be warriors. That's our call, period. As always, I have a little graphic that is gonna summarize those verses and show how this is a continual process, okay? So the call to Christ-likeness, that's what we're focusing on. And we're gonna start with walk as he walked, walk in the spirit, purify yourselves aiming at Christ-likeness, be conformed to the image of Christ, Jesus' sheep hear and follow his voice, he must increase, I must decrease, Believe in Jesus and do the same works. Be an instrument of righteousness. Walk worthy of the calling. And what is that worthiness? That is to walk as he walked. So it starts the entire cycle over again. So you'd walk as he walked, walk in the spirit, purify yourself in Christ's likeness, conform to the image of Christ, be his sheep and fear and listen, increase him, decrease yourself, Believe in Jesus and do his same works. Be an instrument of righteousness and walk worthy of the calling. That is Christ-likeness in a nutshell. We had that verse that said the sheep hear his voice, right? And we're supposed to be obeying what he says. And I think we need a general understanding of what he says. Of course, that is acquired by reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John over and over and over and over and over as we've been instructed. But I'm going to summarize that because some people who might be watching this may not have done that yet. Okay, so I'm gonna just put a big summary on the 108 commands of Jesus, just so we have an overview of what his general message is. But I would highly recommend read and reread the gospels. First are the first and second commandment. Though we're gonna separate those out from the rest because they're very iconic and they're very like, this is number one and this is number two. It is very much an order of things. So. Number one, the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, Luke 10, 27. And then the second commandment is you shall love your neighbor as yourself, Mark 12, 28. And then Jesus says in Matthew twenty two forty, 40, 
all the law and prophets. So that means all the prophecies of the past and all the laws that the Hebrew people were dependent on hang on these two commandments. So love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the general gist. Now there's two other things that are very iconic and can be separated out from the rest of the commandments. The one is the golden rule, which is commonly known, right? Matthew 7, 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So we're back to the same thing. To do to others as you would have them do to you. That is basically the first and second commandments. Just said in a new way. And then number four is the great commission. Which can be pulled out separately as a very important command. So the great commission... Uh, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And Mark 16, 14 to 18, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Then we've got the Lord's Prayer, very common but very important because it has clues on how we are to pray. In this manner, meaning in this way, not word for word, but like this. In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6, 8 to 13. And then I have pulled out a few things that are words of Jesus that say why we should do Jesus' words. Okay? So, if you love me, keep my commandments. Matthew seven twelve, John twelve forty nine. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. John fourteen twenty three. Now the other hundred I'm going to bust through. I'm not reading all the verses. I'm going to give you a highlight of what that's for and you're more than welcome to either screenshot and look up all these verses or you can wait until the last lesson where I'm going to put a PDF link in the very last lesson because this is all too much to process quickly enough um, so I can get these out but I'm going to have a package at the end that's going to be the entire leadership um, series okay so you okay so I'm going to bullet point and hit his commands broken up into different categories okay so the first category is toward Jesus and God, this is how you should be acting. Honor God's laws, pray to God privately, do not pray with vain repetition like pagans, fast discreetly, seek first the kingdom of God, seek first God's righteousness, seek God's help, ask, seek, knock, ask, seek, and knock to God, put Jesus before others and stand up for him in front of others, love Jesus even more than your family, Daily take up your cross and follow Jesus. Go to Jesus if you are weary or burdened and he will give you rest. Have childlike humble faith. If two or three pray together agreeing on anything, it will be done by God. If two or three gather and pray, Jesus is with them. Pray with faith and no doubt. Give to God what belongs to him. Abide in Jesus. Watch for the return of Christ. Have complete faith in God, and what you ask in prayer, believe you have received it. Honor Jesus, and you are honoring God. Serving Jesus is following him. Okay, the next section is about salvation and sanctification. Words he said, summarized. You must be born again. Repent and believe, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Be righteous to enter the kingdom of heaven. Get rid of the cause of sin, receive the Holy Spirit, be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect, strive to enter through the narrow gate, 
hate and lose your life in this world for the sake of the gospel and gain eternal life, take communion to remember Christ's sacrifice and covenant, be born of water and of spirit to enter the kingdom of heaven. He gave some missional directives. Here they are, summarized. Witness, go in the power of the Holy Spirit, exercise spiritual authority, be doers of the word, not just hearers. Pray and ask that workers are sent out to harvest. Whatever you bind or loose on earth is bound or loosed in heaven. Leaders should serve. Make the church a house of prayer for all nations. The kingdom of heaven is for those that bear fruits. Jesus' disciples have authority to drive out demons and heal disease and sickness. Do not oppose others using Jesus' name. Then we've got the category of life wisdom, okay? Store up treasures in heaven, not on earth. Don't worry. Be aware of false prophets. Be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Fear God and not man without worry. Take Jesus' easy and light yoke upon you and learn from him. It will give you rest for your soul. Your words and lifestyle prove your true beliefs and character. Beware of covetousness. Be humble. It is better to give than receive. Do not exalt yourself. Do not listen to impostors while waiting for Christ's return. Bear fruit. Watch and pray to avoid temptation. Be ready, for Jesus will return when you do not expect. And then the last section is how to act toward others. Words that Jesus said summarized. Love one another. Come into complete unity. Let your light shine. Do not be angry with a brother without reason and be reconciled before worship. Do not call anyone a fool. Do not lust after another, especially one you are not married to. Only grounds for divorce is adultery. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Do not retaliate. Go the extra mile. Love your enemies. Do good to haters. Pray for those that use you. Pray for your persecutors. Be merciful as your father is merciful. Be careful to do good discreetly. Forgive others. Judge yourself before others. Share with the receptive. Be careful not to be influenced by religious leaders and man's doctrine. Do not cause a child to sin. Deal with sin against you properly. Honor marriage. Host, help, and feed those at risk. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Give the thirsty something to drink. Visit the sick, visit prisoners, look after strangers, pay your taxes. Be like the good Samaritan and act with mercy. So I hope you find that um, educational and interesting and encouraging. And I'll see you at the next lesson. We're going to go through section two next, which is going to be quick. And it's leadership fundamentals. And I'll see you next time.